What is God? Why do you believe in God? What do you believe? So let's clarify this. Believing that there is a God is silly. Because if there is, there is. And if there isn't, there isn't. So what do you mean, do you believe? Everybody believes in God. Everybody. The question is only, which God are you talking about? So, the classical argument between religion and, and, and science. The scientist says there's no God. The world began with subatomic particles. If the world began with subatomic particles, then that's God. Because God means the original substance from which everything else evolved. So you think it's a subatomic particle. Okay, that's your God. When we say God, we're talking about an original being who, unlike the subatomic particles, knows what he's doing. That's it. That's your choice. Your choice is, do you believe in a God who started a world and doesn't even know it? Or do you believe that God, who started the world, did it intentionally, with a plan? There's no such thing as an atheist. Just because you call God a particle <laughs> doesn't make you an atheist. It makes you an idolater. I'll tell you another thing that makes you an idolater. If you say God needs certain things, we need certain things. And they're often in conflict. He needs me to fast on Yom Kippur, I need to eat. He needs me to get married, uh, I need to stay single. He needs me to rest on Shabbat, uh, my business works best on Shabbat. So we have two needs and we have to figure out how to uh, get along, like a bad marriage. So for many, many years, we were told, your needs are not as important as his. So give up what you need. Be humble. Be obedient. Be submissive. God is the boss. You do what he wants. What you want you have to sacrifice. That sound like a religion? Amazingly, it worked. It worked. Not only for Jews. The whole world, the whole world behaved, built cities, built communities, made new inventions, explored new countries. Why? Because they needed to. Everybody in the world was told what they need to do. Either by the czar, or by some other dictator, or by a preacher, by a religious leader. Everyone was always telling you what you need to do, what you must have. Today, it's the media. Constantly, you are being told what you must have. You must have this new car. You must have this new pair of shoes. You must have this medicine to clear up your sinuses. It might kill you, but so what? Clear up your sinuses. 
everything in the in the in the media in the in society is telling people what they need to do and of course you have to pay for it it reached a point where we can't take it anymore so young people are suddenly saying i don't need to you're telling me i need to I don't need to. I don't care. So your from Zayde said, you, you have to keep Shabbos. You have to go to shul. So they went to shul. Today, if you try saying to your grandchild, to your grandchild you need to keep kosher. I need to? I don't need to. No, you must. No. You have to do this. I don't have to. It took us 5,000 years to figure this out. I don't have to. Not only with religion, everything. The farmer would wake up early in the morning to milk the cow. Why? have to. You got to milk the cow. He would take his 10-year-old son with him to go out and plow the fields. Why? You have to. It's plowing season. It's the season you have to plow. So they plowed. Today, I have to. I don't have to. They don't have to. Why don't I have to? Because I didn't ask to be born. Pretty simple deduction. I didn't ask to be born. I didn't ask to be born because I don't need to be. So if I don't need to be born, what do you mean I need to plow the field? I don't need anything. I didn't even need to be born. So a man in India sued his parents that they should pay all his bills for the rest of his life because they gave birth to him without his permission. <laughs> Sounds funny. He literally took, took them to court, but the courts threw it out. Because the parents said, <laughs> we didn't ask to be born either. So blame grandma. And the grandmother said, I didn't ask to be born either. It sounds funny when you first hear it, but think about it for a minute. Nobody asks you. All of a sudden, you're born, and you have to pay the bill. Does that make sense? You have to go to school. You have to get into a good college. You have to get a good job. You have to pay the mortgage and the taxes. Wait, 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 wait. Did I sign a contract? Did I agree to this responsibility? No. So if you give birth to me, you pay the bills. Doesn't that sound right? And the same thing with religion. God creates me, and now I have to keep Shabbos? So what was the answer in the olden days? You know, like 10 years ago. <laughs> what was the answer? You have to keep Shabbos. I, re I do. <laughs> How did I get myself into this mess? <laughs> How did I become obligated to keep Shabbos? I never agreed to this. You're right, you never agreed to this. But if you don't keep Shabbos, you're going to burn in hell. Aha! That means you have nothing more to say. 
If you're starting to threaten me, it means you have nothing more to say. So you're not telling me why I need to keep Shabbos. You're just telling me that I'm going to get it. So obviously you don't know why I should keep Shabbos either. Because if you knew, you would tell me. You obviously don't know, so you're threatening me. Did you try threatening a child today? Doesn't work. You can't threaten a child today. So what, <laughs> what are we going to do? Can't beat up your kids. What are we going to do? The Rebbe prepared us for this deeply, thoroughly, amazingly. The Rebbe said, you don't need to be born. You don't ask to be born. So why are you? Why are you here? This is no longer a religious question. This is a life question that young children are asking. You tell a child to clean up his room. He says, I didn't ask to be born. Now I have to clean up rooms? So it's not a religious question. It's not a philosophical question. It's a question of reality. What am I doing here? And how did I become obligated to pay bills and to clean up rooms and to get good report cards? How did this happen? And it's such a good question. In the secular world, this causes people to commit suicide. Because they have no answer. I didn't ask to be born, and I am burdened with needs. This doesn't make sense. I quit. But if you're being logical, it's true that you didn't ask to be born. It's true that you don't need to be born. <laughs> I've never heard someone who wasn't born complain. Hey, where wasn't I born? No such complaint. We don't need to be born. So follow the logic. If you're not here out of need, then why are you here? <coughs> the most logical answer. You're not here because of your need. Hmm? No. <laughs> if you're not here because you need it, someone needs it. Someone needs you to be born. So here's our message to the world. A world that is suffering from a complete lack of knowledge, a complete lack of wisdom. The message is simply this. If you think you need, and you're trying to s satisfy your needs, you're going to become depressed. Because it's artificial. You don't really need anything. So as soon as you start thinking need, you're already depressed. The alternative is you are needed. If you look at all the psychology of all the mental, emotional problems in the world, these are the two key ingredients. It is depressing to be needy, and it is depressing to not be needed.
If you solve those two problems, you will have no others. Guaranteed. Part of the failure of psycho psychotherapy, whether it's Freud or Adler or Maslow or whoever it is, the failure is they keep focusing on your need. They're actually making you depressed. You come to the therapist and you say, I have so many needs, I can't stand it. Basically, the therapist says, you have no idea how many needs you have. You have needs you never even thought of. Your mother never wanted you. You're jealous of your brother. Thank you very much. I feel so much better <laughs> now that I have more needs. And then you come to religion for a little relief. And what are you told? Those are only the problems in this world. Wait till you get to the next world. There are problems there waiting for you. So, come on, enough already. Here is the simple conclusion. We have the option to think of our needs or to think of who needs us. If nobody needs you, you are depressed. If you have needs, you are depressed. So what's the solution? <laughs> Obviously, your needs are not yours. His need of you is absolutely eternal. The best of both worlds. I have no burdens. I have no reason to be depressed because I don't need anything. But if nobody needs me, I'll be depressed. God needs you. That's Judaism. The rest is commentary. We made such a terrible error. Maybe it was due to influence from Christianity or from Islam or wherever. When did God become indifferent, retired, living, sitting up in heaven watching us struggle? We are needy and he needs nothing. Isn't that the picture? He's God. He doesn't need anything. We, oh, we have needs. The first words of the Torah, once you understand them, you don't need anything else. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Tell me who needs. Did you hear that? He created heaven and earth. He needs nothing. I didn't create anything, so I need nothing. But he created the world. He doesn't need. How did we get so upside down? The creator of the world has a huge need, an infinite, eternal need, strong enough to make him create an entire universe. We, on the other hand, Never asked to be born. What do I need? Let's take this one step further. You need to eat. You need to sleep. You need a car. You need a phone. You need a doctor. See, we have lots of needs. Just a minute of thought. You need to eat. I need to eat. Actually, I need to stop eating. <laughs> and I can't. So my question is, who did this to me? Who did this to me? If I designed myself, would I make myself dependent on food? 
every three hours? If I designed myself, I would make myself less talented than a camel? Can't go without water? If I designed myself, I would need to breathe? Why, I'm not as talented as a fish? These things that we call our need is not ours. We didn't choose it, we didn't agree to it, we don't want it, we don't like it. What do you mean our, my need? I need to eat. No, no. Whoever created me, created me dependent on food. Thank you very much. I need this like a hole in the head. I need to get a job. <laughs> I need to get a job. Who created the system? Who made it necessary to have a job? Not me. I'm against it. <laughs> I'm against school. I'm against jobs. Who needs it? But that's not the world that I was invited into. I don't make the rules. I don't choose the rules. They're already there. And who made those rules? The Creator. So is it true that I need to eat? Or that he needs me to eat? So let me end with this. A young boy went off to yeshiva in France. Very strict. The day he arrives, he walks into the office of the Rosh Hashiva and he says, in Yiddish, he says, I, I need to call my mother. Where's the phone? And the Rosh Hashiva said to him, you need to call your mother. What does I mean? And what does need mean? Think again. Listen to this. He said, I need to call my mother. Not true? Not true. What should he have said? Hmm? I want to call my mother. Also not true. <laughs> my mother needs me to call her. I, I need to call her? Why is everything me? That's what the Rosh Hashiva was saying. You need to call. Who do you think you are? Your mother deserves that you should call her. You need? It's a chutzpah. I need to eat right now. Really? You're the creator? You created yourself? So let's be careful. When we say we believe in God, it doesn't mean we believe there is a God. Everybody knows there's a God. The only thing that is as consistent and as universal as anti-Semitism is the belief in God. So what do we mean when we say ani ma'amin? I believe. It means I am aware of what's true. He needs me more than I need him. He is the creator. So he is the one who needs. And I'm not going to compete with him and make believe that I have needs. So the one thing that a human being needs is to know who needs you. That's it. Is that not Judaism? Is that not the whole Torah? God comes down to Mount Sinai to tell us what we need? What is that? No. He came down to Mount Sinai to tell us what he needs. 
and how much he needs us to do that. Just imagine, tomorrow morning, people all over the world wake up and say, why am I here? What do I need? I don't want to need. I'm sick and tired of needing. The world would be 50% cured. <laughs>